This video shows our early experiments with creating crucible steel. Crucible steel is best known from India, where it was created as early as 300 BC. It is known as wood steel and was used extensively in the manufacture of swords. This is our first experiment with a furnace that is meant to reach temperatures up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is sufficient for melting wrought iron. We charge the crucible with approximately 1130 grams of wrought iron and 17 grams of pulverized charcoal. Crushed glass is used as a flux. Since we are using charcoal, we should have completely sealed the crucible to prevent oxygen from reaching it. However, as this is just an experiment, we left the crucible open so that we could look into it while the contents were slowly melting. The furnace is made from an old compressor tank and lined with high temperature ceramic fiber blanket and a layer of high temperature concrete. The furnace is meant to withstand temperatures up to 3200 Fahrenheit. Operationally, we are aiming for temperatures around only 3000 degrees though. Lighting the furnace is a little bit exciting since the propane enters at the bottom of the furnace and needs to ignite there too. We are slowly increasing the amount of propane and air till both the air and propane are at their maximum setting. For this run, we set the regulator at the propane bottle to about 5 pounds per square inch. Also notice that the propane bottle is suspended in a bucket of water to prevent it from freezing up. It takes a while for the furnace to come up to temperature since all the concrete needs to be heated up too. The first ingredient that is going to melt is the glass which ends up coating the wrought iron. We use a mirror and welding goggles to look inside to see what is going on. This is not easy to capture with the video camera. At this point in time, the glass is molten and bubbling in the crucible. However, the iron is not hot enough yet to melt. We use a long steel rod as a probe to determine if the whole charge is fluid. If we reach the bottom of the crucible, we know that everything is molten. The probe is very hot once it comes out of the furnace. Once everything is completely molten, there are a lot of reactions going on inside the crucible, as we can see from all the activity on the surface. At this point, we have shut down the furnace and are working on extracting the extremely hot crucible. First, we need to lift the lid. Then, we use a special pair of tongs, lift the crucible out of the furnace and let it cool down in a bucket of vermiculite. We also kept a lock that tells us how long it took to reach melting temperatures. For this run, we reached a maximum temperature of about 3100 Fahrenheit. As can be seen on the graph, we had run out of propane and needed to reconnect a new bottle which explains the dip in temperature. 
After the crucible has cooled down, we slowly break away the glass that is covering the crucible till the ingot drops out by itself. At this point we can take a look at the end result. As this was our first experiment, the results were not perfect. Gaseous reactions in the crucible resulted in many bubbles that were trapped in the ingot and the carbon content was much lower than we aimed for. More next time.